Welcome back, I'm Bill. I've had a number of requests to explain this fairly common American gas machine company valve. Um, I've talked a little bit about these. I did a video on uh, troubleshooting a 2572, one of AGM's lanterns from the late 40s or early 50s. Um, I talked a little bit about this in the more recent video on the Sunflame 3016, which was also made by AGM. Uh, and some folks asked if I could do a video just on this. Uh, so I will. They're a bit different than a Coleman valve. Um, these were used in pretty much every AGM lantern I've worked on or taken apart. Uh, they're not real common up here in Canada, so I'm not overly experienced with them. Um, but I'm guessing these were introduced at some point in the 1930s. They were used throughout the 1940s. Uh, they were used at least in the early 50s. At some point in the 1950s, AGM switched the, the we'll call it the instant light circuit for lack of a better name. That was Coleman's uh, name for it. Um, but uh, they switched over to a Coleman style fuel and air tube. So the issue with all of these manufacturers, their early lanterns like the Coleman Quick Light, uh, but everybody's lanterns had a straight open fuel pickup tube with just, it's an open tube, just a hole at the bottom, uh, like a modern kerosene lantern. Uh, and that meant that as soon as you opened the valve, um, you'd have fuel under, because it's under pressure, you'd have fuel rushing up that tube through the valve and into the generator. And of course it's gonna flood. So you had to preheat the generator. Now, various companies found ways of getting around that. Uh, and the trick is to, to use some of that air that's in the top of the fount that you use to pressurize it to drive the fuel out. The trick is to get some of that air and utilize it um, to mix with the fuel at startup so that it doesn't flood. You wanna cut down on the amount of fuel that's going up through the generator. And if you can tap into that air supply in the tank, that'll do it. So um, most people who are into lanterns and stoves and all that are familiar with Coleman's design. Set this aside for a minute. This is a Coleman valve. Sorry, it's actually a Sears. It's got a Sears knob on it, but made by Coleman. Uh, this is from, uh, this is a 200 style valve. Um, Coleman figured out that you could use this fuel and air tube. Um, initially, they had on the slants a slightly more complicated, well, it's more complicated. It's also more elegant and a little simpler, um, but uh, you have a tiny little orifice um, at the bottom, lets just a little fuel in. Um, and this is actually uh, like a double walled tube. There's a tube inside that runs down. It ends just above the, 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 the bottom. And then there's this outer tube that's crimped on. And in this case, there's a hole up here at the top. Some of them have a hole in the side here. Uh, but this allows the air from the top of the fount in. It rushes down the outer part of the tube or the outer tube. It hits the bottom here and then fuel enters at the bottom. This is the, that orifice and it picks up that fuel and carries the air carries the fuel up out of the top and into the valve. Now what Coleman did is they introduced the there. They put an air what's called an air wire in here and it's on a spring and the valve stem, when it's screwed in, this rests up in here. Uh, it rests against the, the, the valve stem. So the valve stem holds it down and in the closed position, hopefully you can see here, if I turn it toward the light better, the air stem pokes out through that hole. And it's just a little bit smaller than the hole. So what that means is when it's down, um, it's blocking it, but not quite. So a little bit of fuel can seep in around that that air wire. But when you open the valve and, and that air wire is blocking it, what you mostly get is air through this hole. So you end up with mostly air. It picks up the little bit of fuel that's leaking around there, carries that to the generator, and that gives you enough fuel that um, you, can, you can light the lantern but it won't flood, or in theory it shouldn't if, if everything's working properly. So you get just enough uh, fuel to light it, uh, that produces some flame. That's why initially you get a flare up when you light a, a lantern, um, but it fairly quickly settles down and that's enough heat to heat up the generator. Once the generator's hot, um, then the, 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 the fuel is vaporizing and uh, the lantern burns properly. 
And the brilliant thing with Coleman's design is that once the generator's hot, it builds up pressure. That fuel expands many times its original volume when it turns into a gas. That creates pressure back here. Um, and that pressure means that the fuel runs in, but the air doesn't. Uh, and I should add, Coleman's brilliant idea was, uh, you know, all of these things say, oh, I've got this all the way open, let's close it. You know, they say, open a quarter turn, um, until the mantles burn brightly, until it settles down. Well, what's happening is when you open it a quarter turn, the valve stem is tapered. And um, so it's still holding the, 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 air, the air wire down. I probably can't focus on that, but you can see the air wire is blocked there. But as we open the valve further, in fact, I just felt the click. Um, it backs out the valve stem and the air wire pops up uh, from the pressure on the spring. Uh, and uh, so it doesn't matter how far, they say to open the valve all the way, but it really doesn't matter um, because once everything's running properly, uh, the pressure from the generator is going to allow fuel in, but not the air. So you won't lose the air pressure in the top of the fount. Now, I, sh I have another video on an Akron 132. Akron came up with a way of doing that, and you can go and look at that, and it's horribly complex and convoluted. Um, but basically it's similar to this AGM valve. There's an air intake uh, in the bottom of the valve body here next to the fuel uh, and it uh, has a reverse threaded valve stem and when the, the valve is opened it allows air, um, it, when, when the valve is cracked open, until you open it all the way, it has a little uh, double flared uh, tip on the valve stem so it opens the, the path for the fuel while also opening a path for the air to run through. Now, the problem with that is um, if you don't, it, you do that to light it, but if you don't then open the valve stem all the way, which pushes the flange all the way back into the valve, it leaves that path for the air open and um, you end up losing, eventually you'll lose all the pressure in the fountain, the lantern will go out or it'll go dim uh, because it, when you've got the two separate, uh, it's a separate path for fuel, separate path for air, um, the back pressure in the generator isn't going to stop that from happening like it does on the Coleman. So this is AGM's valve. Um, again, same same concept. It's the design's a little bit different. Um, the the tip cleaner actuator is over here on the side. Um, might as well while we're here, I'll show you the generator. Uh, very similar to a Coleman generator in most respects. It's got the, the wire and asbestos tube and all that. Uh, it's got the eccentric, eccentric block, we'll raise it. Uh, what you'll see is on the AGM, as opposed to the Coleman, which has a hook on the bottom of the cleaning needle, this has a little groove and it fits into this claw. Just like that. And then the nut holds it down. So very similar to a Coleman in that regard. Um, you can't really, you can take this out, but just like a Coleman, you can't really take out the the, the cleaning lever um, because there's a valve or there's a graphite packing in there. And um, since these are unobtainium, you can't get parts for these anymore. You can't really take that out and replace it. Um, valve stem basically the same as a Coleman. Here's where it's different. Here's your fuel pickup, kind of like a slant. It's got a, a tip on there with a little tiny orifice. Uh, it's bigger than the tip on the generator. In fact, if, I, if you hold this up to light, you should be able to see uh, see the, the light through that orifice, whereas with a generator tip, it's very hard to do that. Um, because back in the day, people were using gas from who knows where. They had a little brass mesh that was clipped over this. Um, this was back in the day when you know your, your stove came with a siphon to siphon gas out of your car's gas tank. So, um, there could be a lot of grit, uh, debris, silt, things like that in your tank, and that would easily clog up that little tiny hole. So fuel runs up into the valve. Um, this keeps it from completely flooding, but still you, you need to mix air with the fuel uh, so that it doesn't flood. So AGM's way of doing that was this. You can unscrew if you've ever wondered, if you've looked at one of these valves and wondered what this was on the back here, we can unscrew this. You'll see there's a spring inside that. So what this spring is doing is it's pushing this little plunger or 
kind of a pip, it's brass. It pushes when, when the, the, the spring pushes on this and this tapered bit pushes into a flange on the, the back side of the valve. So we've got one taper on the end of the, the valve stem that goes in and when it's threaded all the way in, it shuts off the flow of fuel here. Um, we open that and it opens the flow of fuel. When we open this, what also happens is um, this little guy, the, the, end, the end of the valve stem um, keeps this pushed in and that, that keeps this other valve, if you will, closed. So air is picked up through this little tiny hole from the top of the fount. It runs up and runs into the, this mixing chamber here. So when we crack the valve open, um, the spring that's in here is always pushing this way. So that spring uh, pushes the, that plunger in and that allows air to flow from, from this little hole up into the mixing chamber and mix with the fuel. And because the pressure is so great, you end up with quite a bit of air and this hole is small so you get very little fuel and that keeps it from flooding. Um, but again, like that Akron design, if you just leave the valve cracked like that, the, the lantern will light up, it'll start burning fine, it's getting as much fuel as it needs, but it's going to bleed off all the air in the top of the tank. So what you have to do is open this all the way, and when you open it all the way, at that point the spring pushes this flange up into the opening and that cuts off the air supply. So the valve stem compresses it and that allows air to flow from here up and past into the valve. And then when the valve stem is, is open um, all the way, it allows the spring to push this flange into the valve to cut off the air supply. So interesting design. Um, like I said, I think AGM introduced this in the 30s. Uh, they used it through the 40s. In like fact, every, every AGM lantern I've, I've worked on up, up until some of the later camp lights in the 50s have this same design or something very, very similar to it. Uh, and then later on, they adopted a fuel and air tube system that's essentially the same as a Coleman. I'm not sure when, uh, but the, the camp light I have from 1960 from the very end of the line has that. So I hope that helped. Um, I hope you have a better understanding of how these AGM valves work. See you next time.